We are here today in La Bressou, of course, at the birthplace of AP, and we are in the family room where Jules Audemars and Edward August Piguet lived and worked. We are here with Luca Raji, the Director of Research and Development at AP, or as I call him, the RD King. And then we have Michael, who is the Head of Complications, and he works very closely with Luca Raji, and Michael is again living legend at AP. So we're here to talk about the most significant launch of this year for you guys. And in my opinion, it's my favorite watch of the year. Why don't we dive into that and talk about the new AP Audemars Piguet Royal Oak RD3. In my opinion, the flagship of the 50th anniversary. Well, the 50th anniversary of the Royal Oak. I mean, to be able to celebrate together the anniversary of an iconic watch model during our time working in this brand and with friends of the brand is such an incredible pleasure and honor to do so. Never mind just watchmaking, even beyond watchmaking, into the scope of design, the Royal Oak has left its mark and it will continue to do so. Never had a watch been introduced with such strong geometric lines, created from a, a material that had no inherent value, but was hand finished to a point to where it goes from raw steel to a work of art. And the fact that we have the opportunity to be part of teams and part of a, of a company that can keep working on this incredible design and seeing how it can push into the future is definitely a, a reason to celebrate. And that's exactly why we're here with you today, Austin, to celebrate. Amazing. So Luca, how did this project come to be? And uh, how does it fit into as RD King, you know, into the, the picture of, you know, RD1, RD2 and RD3? So basically, Austin, you know about the Calibre 7121, mm -hmm. the new one for the Jumbo. Mm -hmm. And um, approximately at the same period of time, we decided to launch a parallel project. And the challenge was to try to integrate a self-winding tourbillon in the same dimension as a Jumbo watch. Mm. So meaning 39 millimeter and 8.1 millimeter of thickness. So you're telling me there's a self-winding flying tourbillon in an 8.1 millimeter case. All right. So same proportions as a 16202. That is incredible. Exactly. You can't see the difference in terms of dimensions. Yeah. And Michael, how about, you know, give us some context on how RD3 fits into the big picture of RD1, which was a chiming complication, RD2, which was a calendar complication, and now Torbion. It's a great question, Austin. So there's a lot of projects that can be designated research and development. Mm -hmm. However, Luca and his team choose carefully which ones are going to have that official big RD, RD name. name in front of it, where we're going to make it part of the way we discuss and share the story of the watch. Mm -hmm. And this one, for the reasons mentioned, falls into that trajectory. You you answered the question in the process of asking it. RD1 back in 2015 focused on chiming. RD2, which came next, focused on the ultra-thin perpetual calendar, which was in a 41 millimeter case. And now here we are in 2022, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Royal Oak with the first high complication being fit into the original dimensions of the Royal Oak, as you said, at 8.1 millimeters. That's what's crazy, Austin, because we have the original Jumbo from 72, mm -hmm. and that watch, the dimensions have remained pretty pure all the way through. However, when complications arrived on the Royal Oak in 1983 and 84, 84 was the perpetual, the dimensions went up to 9.5 millimeters approximately. Yeah. So for most of the history of 39 millimeter Royal Oak complications, they've been 9.5 millimeters or larger. So this is the first time we're coming with a new generation complication, really any complication that fits into those original dimensions, really honoring the design codes that Gerald Genta had established so long ago. What a way to celebrate the 50th anniversary, to go back to the Genesis Royal Oak and to fit this amazing complication in the case. So congratulations. And something else there. 39 is the beginning point, mm -hmm. but we're also looking at going smaller as well. Wow. So for later complications? Th for complications, no which way. it's been a long time coming. I know you've been excited about this. <laughs> so believe it or not, later this year, we will be introducing the RD3 technology in a 37 millimeter Royal Oak case as well. Whoa. 
It's, it, you know, it's about... 8.1 as well. 8.1 as well. It's, it's, it's the same movement and the movement was be, is able to be accommodated in the 37. Luca and his teams worked really hard on that. And he set it up just a moment ago. It's really about canvases of different horological expression. We have been doing a really great job since O2 with Concept, which is a larger format yeah. to introduce new and in innovative uh, mechanisms. Code offered us a middle ground, a mid-size architecture that allowed us to work on various movement developments as well as play with the depth. However, RD2 and now with RD3 and now bringing it to the jumbo and smaller, we're now able to reclaim that space in extra thin uh, complications, which has been part of Onomar PA's DNA really for a long time, mm -hmm. starting with the 1978 perpetual calendar, which was in the round case. And then of course, one we haven't discussed yet, which is an ancestor to this watch, is the 1986 Turbion, yeah. which was the world's first self-winding Turbion with Turbion visible on the escapement side, which was available for the public. The difference between this modern generation movement and that movement isn't just the design and the aesthetics, and it's the reliability. It's the it's the strength of the movement. And that's something that I think Luca, you're far better suited than myself to expand on the, the robust nature of these of these extra thin movements. Yes, for sure it's a, it's a movement from the newest generation, mm -hmm. meaning that we we have teamed up the, the different departments in IP to um, to work in a, in a parallel manner with the 7121 and this RD3 movements in order to get the best of the, the watchmakers and the best of the reliability and the quality we can have both on the technical aspects and on the finishings. Mm. People are, would always wonder how long a project like this takes. Does it take, you know, years and how many departments? It's, I think people fail to realize how much work goes into to developing a brand new caliber, especially something at this size, because the smaller, the harder, basically, right? In this yeah, space. That's, that's right. It's all about the miniaturization. Mm -hmm. So we started in 2018 and, you know, a project um, from the beginning, you don't know everything you're going to put it in. Yeah. Do we put a date? Mm -hmm. uh, are we going to make a 39 millimeter case, a 37 millimeter case? And then the first year you mix up all those ingredients in order to decide mm -hmm. what will remain in the watch. So we started in 2018 and the first year was dedicated to make all those choices. Mm. And then we developed it um, and then we are able to release it this year. Amazing. So five years altogether, let's say, from a brand new caliber. That's incredible, but it was worth it. Of course, I'm very, very excited. I'm, obviously, it would be better if we had the real thing here uh, so I could see it, but I would probably not take it off my wrist and run away. <laughs> so it's probably a good thing that it's not here. Yeah, sure. um, and so I think also like what what is uh, this 3D model here? Like how does the process start? You start off big and then you go small or how? Yeah, you know, we've got big screens, mm -hmm. but then when you want to be a concrete in, uh, one, in scale one, mm -hmm. uh, we don't, it's not a direct process. So we use what we call um, plastic mockup mm -hmm. as a scale 10 or scale 20 like this one. This one is a 3D printed mockup and it helps the engineer and the watchmakers to speak together to understand how we will produce it, how we will assemble it, how we will finish it. So we, we, we train our watchmakers to um, understand what they will need in order to uh, manufacture the watch. Mm -hmm. And so we had basically uh, different options. This one is of course the final option to understand which was the best solution to reach this level of thickness. Mm -hmm. And is there any particular reason? Uh, I mean, why you guys launched it in steel with the same uh, color as uh, the 16202 ST? For sure, I think we really wanted to pay honor and tribute to the original Jumbo from 1972 on the eve of the actual 50th anniversary. But we also wanted to speak to the future at the same time. Uh, it's very important to be able to show that journey that's been taken, but also indicate that each generation and each passing generation were wanting 
to leave our mark as well. We're wanting to make sure that we keep seeing evolutions within this business and this industry. So we're not just recreating the past. We want to make sure we're always adding new chapters into this exploration of, of mechanical art, mechanical horology, and combining the tourbillon with the original dimensions of the Royal Oak for all of us was a dream. You know, the tourbillon is the most beautiful escapement that can be created. You see the revolution of time at a quick glance. Our initial concern when we were talking about the 39 format was, and the 8.1 millimeter thickness, was will the tourbillon have enough substance to it? Mm -hmm. And that's, going back to your question before, that's where the mock-up really played in. Because it's not just a matter of how thin or how thick or what the diameter is, it's always about proportions as yes, well yes. and about coherence as well. And that's where Luca and I really come together from our two sides of the business. You know, he mentioned the date earlier. Mm -hmm. It was possible that there could have been a version with a date, but he knows now from all of our work together, what's the viewpoint of, of the clients? What are they looking for? As well as the design, you know, symmetry and purity. These are aspects of movement design and watch design that we're really think about constantly. Mm -hmm. The coherency of how everything fits together, how everything works together, uh, as well as making sure that symmetry is something that is always considered, mm -hmm. especially in the format of the Royal Oak, which is perhaps the most symmetrical watch design that we've seen. So all of this is part of those discussions and part of those pathways that uh, hopefully lead us towards making the right decisions to honoring that past, but also clearly, clearly stating, hey, here's another path where we can go. Mm -hmm. you know, the Royal Oak has really it evolved from an individual model into a form language within 10 years of its life. Mm -hmm. uh, by the early 80s, this was clearly not one watch model. You had multiple sizes, multiple materials. 10 years after that, it's exploded. And here we are now another 30 years since that time, 50 years into its history, and we're really only starting to see what's possible with this incredible form language. Incredible. And I think everyone would want to know if it's limited or not, if you guys are only making it this year, or yeah, how is that going to play out? So of course this year uh, we introduced it with the 50th anniversary of the eating weight, mm -hmm. but uh, for sure this movement and this watch will last. Don't worry Austin, it's here to stay. The 39 Turbion will be here to stay, as will the 37. Maybe different interpretations as time passes, but we're not interested in doing one shots anymore. When we spend the time to develop something new, we want to see where it will lead, where it will go, and most importantly, how collectors like yourself will appreciate and enjoy the piece over time. Now that you guys have launched, you know, in my opinion, my my personal favorite watch of the year, I think people are also they also want to know: Is this it for the 50th anniversary celebrations, or is there more coming? And if, you know, I'm sure you guys have a lot planned in the future. Um, so can you tell me about that? So, of course, we have a nice review here, but um, hold on, Austin. <laughs> More is to come, uh, of course, this year, uh -huh. but also in the next years to come, we have long-term plan. And when I'm talking about long-term plan movement, it means up to 2030. And across all existing complications, as well as the possibility of brand new complications and, and combinations that we haven't seen yet before in the Audemars Piguet universe. Amazing. And across all formats, from these 37 and 39 millimeter extra thins, through code, through offshore, through concept, we're really wanting to make sure we add new chapters into this ongoing story with complications and without complications across those collections too. A lot to come. A really good path up to the 150th anniversary of the company in 2025, as well as Luca revealed even beyond that point with some plans up to 2030. And of course, you know me, I have a lot of ideas for the future. Oh yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Can't, can't wait to see what you guys have in store. So thank you so much for your time. And I'm um, very, very looking forward to seeing the watch in, in the metal. Thank you, Austin. Thanks, it's always great seeing you, man. Thank you.